Hey, this is Justin from NetGate. Today, we're diving into the AWS High Availability Solution for PFSense Plus. The PFSense AWS HA solution consists of two components. The standard HA that's available on all of our form factors and the AWS specific enhancements. On the primary system, we'll configure the standard HA relying on three essential services. First, we'll head over to the system dropdown. Select High Availability. You'll see the first of our services, PFSync, which handles state configuration between devices. And we'll choose the WAN interface for synchronization. Next, we have the peer IP, which is the IP from the WAN interface of the secondary device. Next up is XML RPC, which we will be syncing configurations from the master to the secondary. And once again, we'll input our peer address. You'll need to enter the username and password for your secondary device. We'll select the following configurations to sync. Firewall rules, schedules, aliases, NAT settings, and virtual IPs. Moving on to our final service, CARP, which is our redundancy protocol. Under firewalls, we'll add a virtual IP and we'll select CARP. We'll select an address from the reserved testnet IP range. For our example, we'll use 192.0.2.101. After setting a password, which does not have to be the same as the XML RPC password, we'll choose unicast and specify the WAN IP address of our secondary firewall as the peer. Now let's take a look at the status dropdown under CARP. We can see that the state synchronization is not complete yet. We only see our one node, but the status is correct as master. Let's head over to our secondary firewall. All we need to do is configure PFSync. You'll head over to the system dropdown to high availability check pfsync, make sure it's set to WAN, and for the peer IP, it'll be the WAN IP from the primary firewall. We'll hit save. Now this may take a minute or two. All right, now that it's done, we'll head over to status dropdown, over to CARP. First, we can see that the CARP virtual IP is present. The failover status is indicating that the device is in backup mode, State synchronization status is showing synced host IDs, and the primary firewall is properly marked as the master. Now, let's take a look at the AWS high availability setup on the primary system. We'll head over to system, AWS high availability, but before setting anything up here, we'll navigate to our AWS dashboard. Here, we'll see our two instances. We need to associate the IAM role for both instances by going to Actions, Security, and Set the Role. And we'll repeat this for the other instance. The permissions you would need for this role can all be found in the documentation down in the description. The next thing we'll take a look at are the routes. These are routes that already exist in AWS. We have a WAN, and LAN route table. Let's start with our WAN route table. Copy the WAN AWS route table ID. Now, head back to your primary system and under routes, we'll hit add. We'll select the CARP VH ID, paste the route table ID we got from AWS, and now we have to set the route cider. This is the internal VPC workload range and it must already be provisioned in the WAN subnet. And for the interface, we'll make sure it's set to WAN. We'll hit save. We'll add another route and head back to our AWS route table dashboard. Copy the AWS route table ID for LAN. Head back to your primary firewall. 
we'll paste it in. And for the cider, we'll use a default or corporate route. For this example, we'll use the default route and select the LAN interface. We'll hit save. The next step is to configure the elastic IP. This is the floating public IP address that will move from the primary WAN interface to the secondary firewall's WAN interface. The elastic IP must already exist and be associated with the WAN interface of the primary firewall. Then we'll head back to the AWS dashboard and under network and security under elastic IPs, we'll copy the allocation ID of our provisioned elastic IP. We'll go back to our primary system and add a new route. Select the CARP VHID, paste the allocation ID, and select the WAN interface. Lastly, you'll select the private IP of the primary firewall's WAN interface. We'll hit save. Now, if we head over to our secondary firewall, go to system, AWS high availability, and look under routes. Here you can see that our routes match. This is because we configured XML RPC. You will notice that under elastic IPs, the allocation ID is the same, but the IP is that of the secondary device's WAN interface. Now we can test our solution. Let's start some pings. While that's going, we'll stop our primary firewalls instance to simulate a failover. We'll see that the pings are failing to the primary instance and there's the failover. We only missed a couple pings. If we look at the elastic IP, we can see that it's now associated with the secondary device's WAN interface. Now we can ping again, bring back the primary device. And the transition back is just as fast. Now, when we go back to our Elastic IP, we can see that it's associated with our primary firewall once again. And that'll about cover it for the AWS HA solution for PFSense Plus. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more news, updates, and guides from NetGate. This is Justin, and I'll see you next time.